Welcome to this episode of the Lehigh Valley with Love podcast. Uh, today we're with Richard Master, CEO of MCS Industries, headquartered in Easton, Pennsylvania. He's also the chairman of the board of the Business Leaders for Healthcare Transformation. And he teamed up with filmmaker Vincent Mondillo to produce four films, Fix It, Healthcare at the Tipping Point, Big Pharma, Market Failure, Big Money Agenda, Democracy on the Brink, and the one that we're going to be talking a little bit more about today, American Hospitals. So I want to welcome both of you guys. Thank you for taking some time out to speak with me today. Thank you. Happy to be with you, George. So Richard, I kind of want to start at your beginning, um, you know, reading the story of how these films came to be. Can you tell me a little bit about what went on in, in your business that prompted you, you know, to go from the owner of a business to, to saying, I want to work on films and get this message out that way? Well, what was happening at MCS was we were receiving over uh, the previous 10 years, and this goes back almost 10 years uh, into the mid 2010s. Uh, we were receiving increases in health insurance premiums of double digit, sometimes high double digit increases annually. Uh, and we started to turn over the rocks of the healthcare system, what was the reason for this? We had made uh, changes in our insurance uh, insurers and brokers and tried to do all kinds of things and nothing seemed to work. At the same time, our employees uh, were complaining that the insurance that we were giving them was even less uh, year to year, uh, you know, helpful in, in dealing with the expenses that they were incurring. We thought we had great insurance and frankly, you know, we may have had Cadillac plans here at MCS, but uh, if a, a you know, worker in one of our facilities uh, got sick or someone in their family got sick, uh, they were really experiencing high out-of-pocket expenses at the same time. So. I turned to Vince, uh, who is a friend of mine for many years, and said, look, we've got to do something about this. We've got to uh, ex uh, explore what is going on, uh, do a, more, a deeper dive. So we started turning over the rocks of the healthcare system, and what we found was really quite disturbing. And where do you even begin? You know, what is maybe that first step? Um you know, well, to me, with, it, just, it looks like a, a, a huge mountain to climb. You know, I wouldn't even know what the first step would be. What did you do? Well, we, we began where my, 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 mostly my concern started was it was with health, health insurance. Uh, what, do, what do we get? What are the intermediaries that are required to even secure insurance? What are the insurance charging? How much of the premium they were uh, taking for their own administration, what were the administrative costs in the provider end uh, in dealing with the thousands of uh, plans and the hundreds of insurance policies, uh, excuse me, companies that were were mm -hmm. in, involved. And that, you know, became fix it healthcare at the tipping point. Uh, how insurance was failing to represent uh, us in adequately and bargaining uh, on behalf of uh, businesses, moderate sized businesses like our business in the Lehigh Valley. What were some of those first things that you found that, I, I don't wanna, maybe it, it, the correct term is shocked you. Was there anything that you kind of held up? You're like, this is, this is crazy. Well, what was crazy was was really the uh, inability of insurance really to work. Uh, we interviewed, Vince interviewed uh, some of the workers here at MCS. And one of the workers, maybe Vince, you should continue on, yeah. uh, was, a, you know, it was really aggrieved because she, she was about to lose uh everything that she had worked for over the years. Uh, yeah. And she really questioned if, if she got seriously ill, in addition to her husband who wasn't employed, he was dependent at that point, 
uh, you know, what would happen to her and her ability to, to really survive. Yeah. Well, I think one of the issues with all of this is that until people end up in the experience, they really don't quite know what's going on. You know, people who say, wow, I have great insurance with my company and I love it and I want to keep it. When I interviewed five of Richard's employees, only one out of five had any clue what the plan was, what the deductibles were. And they all assumed it was good insurance, which it was relative to Richard's industry. You know, he wants to keep his employees at the head of the curve. But Again, you, you you get a serious illness and suddenly then you find out how good your plan is. And um, and I remember Richard, I can literally remember how horrified he was to find out what his employee was going through. Because again, his goal is to get the best insurance relative to his business. And he assumed it was good just like they did. And when he heard what she was going through, I can tell you literally he was horrified. And it you know, um, and the other thing he was dealing with was double digit increases every year relentlessly um, compared to his other expenses, which, you know, were relatively stable. Um, so, you know, beyond the interviews, we started doing a deep dive into all of this stuff, you know, researching, reading books, reading articles, you know, looking at interviews that were already online and, and gathering up what eventually became our group of experts that we would interview to get, you know, the full picture. Yeah, and we, and questioned, I, and we questioned really why are, why is a company that makes picture frames and photo albums and mirrors uh, in the healthcare business? Why do we have right. HR professionals who aren't particularly immersed in, in healthcare themselves uh, involved with counseling our our employees. Uh, shouldn't this be something that uh, should be handled elsewhere, um, as 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 it is in most other countries in in the in modern industrialized world? No, I, I, I yeah, look, is it, I, yes, oh, yeah, please, please, please go ahead. I, I was just going to say that 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 started an investigation into insurance. And originally, we were going to make a film dealing with all aspects of this, the pharmaceutical side, uh, the hospitals. We had this kind of big picture. But when we began diving into it, we realized that it was just too much to put into one film. So that's when, you know, Richard came up with the idea that we really need to do, you know, a series of films. Mm -hmm. And that led us to where we are now, which is hospitals. Um, uh, you know, which, you know, play a big role in, in the cost situation. And again, we took a deep dive into hospitals like we did into insurance to determine why do they cost so much? What are we getting for our money? What what value do they bring to the health of the community? So again, we churned up all of these questions and started taking a deeper dive to try to understand what we got on the headlines. But most people, again, don't fully understand Sure. The question, I just wrote this down, and it's hard to just, I mean, we're talking about four films, you know, that are really diving into the, the deep matter of this. Are you finding that, is it greed? Is it incompetence? Is it the system is just not set up correctly? You know, what are some of the the takeaways, I guess, that you're, you're seeing where these problems are arising from? Well, I, I think a yeah. lot of the problems we've seen in all of our films is there are structural issues. You know, you can't blame it 200% on greed because if you are running an organization, you may be inclined to make the most money possible, which, you know, is what you're, what you're there to do. The problem we found with hospitals is that move towards being profitable and being efficient and operating more like a business started conflicting with the with the health of the community, with how much it costs the community. Um, so what starts out with good intentions, you know, often then ends up in a problematic area. But what we found is the incentives are wrong. 
You know, if you if you start out with wrong incentives, your your people are not going to behave the way you hope they do. So if a hospital is incentivized to maximize revenue, that can end up being in conflict with maximizing community health. So what we, we are proposing in the movie is a, an examination of those incentives and the underlying financial structure that we think leads to some of the problems. Is there, like, what would be a possible fix? Is it government intervention? Is it, you know, just a, a, a different way of, of structuring? I guess when you're speaking of incentives, I'm just curious, like, what, would be a possible solution here? Or is it really a matter of shedding the light on it so that maybe we can come up with a, a possible solution? Well, maybe I can jump in here. The The concern is, is that we really do not have what I would consider a system, a healthcare system in the United States. This is something that as a result of deregulation in the 1980s, uh, we, this is something that we've allowed to occur uh, uh, as a result of, of market forces. Um, and those forces were, you know, the insurance companies became, uh, as a result of their consolidation, r really very powerful. And the hospitals, as a result, um, also began to consolidate because they needed bargaining power vis-a-vis the insurance companies and in the in the lehigh valley for example you have two major hospital networks that do not cooperate with each other it used to be in pennsylvania that you required a hospital required a certificate of need to justify a major investment in a new hospital that is no longer required and prices are not really uh regulated and until recently, until the last two years, there was no requirement that those uh, prices were transparent. So you have all of that together and you have a system where an organization, a hospital could uh, you know, levy prices that uh, they just decided were uh, uh, what they wanted rather mm -hmm. than what was uh, something that was competitive in a marketplace. And we, we do have that problem in the, in the Lehigh Valley where we have, you know, essentially overpriced hospital care uh, that is, uh, that our, uh, you know, our employees and our populations are being subjected to. You know, at the same time, the hospitals, as a result of their, uh, feelings of instability and uh, what could happen in the future are amassing huge sums of money, which enable them to buy uh, medical practices and build hospitals where they want, and they're not cooperating with each other. They're doing it, both of them have a market dominant strategy, and they compete with each other by putting hospitals, uh, you know, basically not adjacent to each other, I can't say that, but within a, a few miles of each other. And, and mm -hmm. these hospitals are, uh, cost, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars to build. And who's paying for those hospitals? We're the rate payers. All the uh, members of this community are, are really, you know, paying uh, these, uh, you know, exorbitant rates, which then, are realized on balance sheets of the hospitals, and they're nonprofit hospitals. They can't uh, they can't uh, distribute the money to shareholders, so they this is the fuel for them to compete with each other. And you know the competition is palpable here in the Lehigh Valley. You, you see it. I, you know I don't think they are very fond of each other. Um, and and you, I think too you, you do you see these hospitals you seem like they're doing so well and you would just kind of assume well then the prices would be lower you know if these are they're operating so well um, but that's not the case. Well, they compete on everything except price, unfortunately. Which is yeah, uh, and that would be the one you would hope. Yeah, they and would. So we are hopeful that transparency in prices, which has really come into effect, there's there are new 
uh, transparency regulations which require help hospitals to publish prices uh, mm -hmm. and enabling um, the the uh, plan managers to to um, negotiate and shop and we think we see if these are ever respected by our our hospitals here and if the data does come out that there will be uh, in great uh, uh, increased uh, market competition okay. now, let's talk about the, the film itself um, can you talk a little bit about how you release it like what is your your method of distribution for this film and where can people learn more about it Vince oh so we have um, uh, we brought on um, producers of marketing and distribution on on board from the uh, for the film um, you know the team from LA and they've been handling the theatrical distribution of the movie so we we were going out in 20 cities across the country oh okay we had a pre our initial premiere was in Washington DC then the following week we had two screenings in New York and you know again many in California Indiana etc so that's the first a level is, you know, theatrical screenings. And then the second layer will be community screenings where, you know, we're hoping to get as many as 500 screenings across the country for community organizations with the ultimate goal of hopefully the, the movie is going to stimulate community action. Um, and then Richard is also working with a team down in uh, DC to arrange screenings for the Senate and Congress, um, the House rather. So, um, you know, the politicos are gonna be seeing it as well. Okay. One of the, just as an example, in a, in a preliminary screening for a uh, member of the legislature in Indiana, he, he basically saw our movie and immediately started looking into taking action. Um, with you know, various policies that were inspired by the movie. So that's the other thing we're hoping is that the movie stimulates legislative action besides community action. You know, for somebody like myself, you know, we were just on the phone with insurance yesterday dealing with, you know, there was a, a clerical error that caused one of my daughter's um, appointments to be not accepted. And it was literally somebody had put in the wrong number uh, you know, just crazy. You're on the phone for two hours. What is something that the the typical lay person can do? Is there anything? Um, is it is it to continue to talk about it? Is it to share films like this? Well, well, you know, if you're if you're a member of a plan, if you're an employee of a company that has a healthcare plan, it shortly as a result of the transparency in that's required by hospitals. Uh, that plan really has to scrutinize the uh, expenditures very carefully, and it and it should be able and it should be required to shop on behalf of uh, employees in that firm. Mm -hmm. So, in and to do that aggressively and to make sure that there is quality uh, in in the treatments that are made available and in the network that is established by the insurance company that's uh, the intermediary. So, you know, and if that's not happening and if employees are aggrieved, uh, then, you know, they can under their ERISA laws, uh, which protect both pension and healthcare plans, they can take action. They can consult with attorneys who would uh, represent them and, and uh, pursue uh, action from the uh, from their employer to do things correctly. I know that sounds like it's a pretty radical thing to do, but uh, I think this kind of activity and these kinds of discussions will encourage mm -hmm. the business community, which basically has had its head in the sand on these mm -hmm. issues, uh, to to be more active in and uh, and more cost cost conscious when it comes to hospital care. Would, I'm familiar with at least one local coalition um, that pools businesses together 
the Le- LBBCH, the Lehigh Valley Biz, uh, Coalition for Health and Truth. Is that one, like, are those types of things that are positive? Yes, they, that is a very good organization, very well run. And, uh, you know, and they reflect really the sentiments of the business community. Uh, you know, I, I would say that you, we have to be concerned. Look, the, the hospital systems here are the region's largest employers. Mm-hmm. They're number one and two, you know, in terms of employment. They're major development uh, developers of real estate. They have immense political power. They have Im- immense financial uh, uh, power as a result of their liquid reserves. One of them has over $2 billion in liquid reserves that are really not utilized on a day-to-day basis in the operations of, of, of their, their network. Uh, the other one is also, you know, very powerful and, and, mm-hmm. Uh, and has tremendous resources. So, you know, look, we're all dealing with a, a circumstance that, that has reached uh, a point where it shouldn't have reached, uh, where we are subject to, to uh, so much power in our community from really what are supposed to be charitable, uh, mm-hmm. you know, organizations. It almost feels like you're, you're literally putting the cat back in the bag. You know, it's, you're yeah. kind of, yeah, um, it's unfortunate. But what is your goal? We're, we're at four films now, which, you know, you said when you began, you didn't think you would be doing that. Do you have um, any goals beyond this? To, well, are there additional know, goal, films in the future? Well, our goal is, is number one, to raise public consciousness about this circumstance. You, you know, mm-hmm. it, Years ago, uh, when Eisenhower was president, you know, we, we we were concerned about the military industrial complex. Eisenhower right. made a speech in 1960 uh, in which he, he claimed that that too much of our national resources were going into uh, into the armed services and 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 military contractors. Well, at that point, we were maybe eight or nine percent of the overall economy was was military and at that point five percent of the economy was health care we're now 18 percent health care and three percent uh military so the, this system is the military industrial complex on steroids mm-hmm. the health care system is that that dominant in the society we don't want to we we think we're getting wonderful care here in the in, in the Lehigh Valley. We're not really complaining about the care. What we are complaining about is the is the power and the utilization of these resources for the benefit right. of the community. We think that there we're in, in the midst of a a market dominant strategy with two players and we're funding that strategy that that strategy when we really should be benefiting from the immense resources that these organizations have. Yeah, and and to to be clear, we don't want to single out our regional hospitals because sure, right. I what, mean, what is this? Yeah. This is going on all across the country. Right. And the other thing is, our financial structure also at the same time is is the source of desperate hospitals that don't have enough money because mm-hmm. they have. You know, they have people with less resources, either uninsured or Medicaid or Medicare. So what what we have is a total imbalance. You know, we have a situation like we do in the Valley where there's money, there's power, there's also good care. Mm -hmm. And then other areas where hospitals are closing down because they're not financially viable. And what we so what we argue in the film is that it's not just a matter of dealing with the big and the powerful. It's a matter of creating a system that's more equitable. That is a better distribution of our healthcare resources. Um, and that's, that really should be at the heart of everything we consider, you know, mm-hmm. what, how do you get the most health care for the community at the highest quality and the lowest price? It's really right. pretty simple. And, and that's that's the mission that needs to happen across the country. But again, 
this is a structural problem and our film takes a deeper dive into that. So again, we're not on one level blaming hospitals, even calling them greedy because, you know, you work with whatever structure you're in. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about all the things that are in the film. I know that there's also the, the uh, website's a good resource. I was on it. I'm on it right now. Um, is it fixithealthcare.com is for all the films and there's a take action um, and there's other ways to reach out and to get in touch and to learn more? That's correct. Yeah. Fixithealthcare.com is, is the website to go to to see the other films in addition to Amazon and other, you know, uh, uh, you know, sites like Amazon uh, for, for uh, you know, achieving the, the, mo the movies, getting the movies in your home. And, and this movie, American Hospitals Carrying a Broken System, will be available after the community screenings and the theatrical screening uh, is, is finished. And I would say by uh, the latter part of the summer, folks okay. will be able to, uh, you know, stream them onto their, their TVs and computers. Yeah, but at the same time, we want to encourage them to go to the Lehigh Valley premiere and see it on a big screen. Oh, yeah. And where is that taking place? At, that's going to be at the at Arts Quest at the Banco uh, Cinema, Monday, 7 p.m. And the movie will be followed by a panel discussion. And when you um, say Monday, you mean this, this Monday, Monday, the 24th. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, continue. You said it'll be followed by a panel discussion. So there, there is yeah, it'll be followed by a panel there. discussion. Richard and I will be on the panel. Mark Pinsley, the controller of Lehigh County, and Hassan Batts, the uh, mm -hmm. the uh, head of Promise Neighborhoods, mm -hmm. will be on the panel. Yeah, and um, Wendell Potter, who's yep. uh, yeah. the head of an uh, organization called Health and Democracy out of Philadelphia, will be here in the Valley uh, as moderator. And so he's uh, also a best-selling author. Yeah. Yeah. New York Times author. Um, yeah. And we basically, you need to reserve tickets because if you show up without having a reservation and it sells out, we don't want people not being able to get in. Sure. So if they go to our website under events and then go to the Bethlehem screening April 24th, they'll be able to click and, and get tickets reserved. And and See tickets right are there's no charge for this screening. Right. Uh, this is for the benefit of the community. We want as many people to see this uh, movie as possible here, and hopefully, at, at uh, there will be additional community screenings, which also will be gratis uh, for for folks to get involved. All right. Well. Excellent. There's so much here. I, even as I was researching, you know, um, this morning and reading up, it's so much information. It, it's what you guys have done is incredible. And, you know, it's a, it's a thank you to to uh, people like myself who just you look at this situation. You're like, there's nothing I can do. It, yeah. it, it's just so demoralizing just when you when you look at it that way and to be able to, um, you know, watch films that really go into it and really educate you is uh, yeah. a benefit. And thank you. That. Yeah. Can I, can I, yeah, go yeah. ahead, Vince. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was just going to add a little bit to that because what you just said is important. You know, when, when people ask about our movies, I almost don't want to call them documentaries because mm -hmm. we do a tremendous amount of research, you know, between Richard and I, I mean, just massive amounts of research and we try to deal with the highest quality research. So virtually everything you see in the film you don't necessarily need to agree with it, but you can be sure that it's backed up by high-end journals that deal in healthcare policy. Mm -hmm. So you're getting very good quality information. And I'd like to say we condense a year and a half of our research into a situation where the audience can get that in one hour. Okay. Um, so yeah, there's, there's quite a bit in the movie. We cover more than your average documentary. Well, I, I'm looking forward to learning more. Um, you know, I, I hope you guys continue to to do more of this uh, stuff in the future. And I want to thank you again for coming out. We'll we'll leave um, the information. All of that is in the show notes, including 
the ticket link to Arts Quest on Monday, the 24th. If you're not able to make it, uh, visit fixithealthcare.com for more information, all the information on the films and when you'll be able to watch American Hospitals at home. Thanks right, so much. Thank you. All right. Richard and Vince, thank you guys so much. Uh, it's been a pleasure and take care. Thank you. Thank you.